<laughs> Hi guys, if you don't know me already, my name is Michelle Vinicurve, and I am a blogger of my blog series, The World of Autism. I am also a keynote speaker, self-advocate, and but mainly I work as a paraprofessional with experiences of working with elementary school children living with autism. So my guest on here is Justin. How are you doing, Justin? We good. How about you? Good. Good. I'm doing well. So let's start off here by telling everybody a little bit about yourself today. Well, I'm pretty much a speaker as well. I work for over at Blue Spirit, which we do ABA therapy for autism. I'm a clinical support administrator for them. I'm a self advocate for autism. So, 38 years old and as well. Elementary, like school age, because you said they're like you're like you said eight year olds. Well, it's they it's pretty much different ages, pretty, but mostly they're pretty young. Very cool, very cool. So I know that you're that you're a speaker as well, and I know we were talking about this in like in Messenger and stuff a bit that you do uh, speeches to law enforcement, correct? Yes. So can you tell a bit? more about what what you um been talking about to law enforcement because there's about autism and uh general generalization you know, like about how approached and uh how to you know just uh, like with traffic stops to engagement in uh just uh, different scenarios i know there's like like from adults to people, young kids i think that's incredible because you know, um, even like it is, autism is a spectrum. It affects everyone differently and stuff from from childhood to adulthood. And it's important for uh, for police officers to understand what can happen when you have an individual that's a passenger or even a driver. So mm -hmm. what, what are like, can you provide some examples of what you told to, what you have told to um, police officers about? Because I think it's really cool that you are working together with them to um, educate about autism. Well, it brings like uh, traffic stops, we're actually like uh, trying to see, like, you know, I know, like for me, like I, you know, and all of us like we have to comply with them and we'll make sure we're pretty much on the same page. On the, uh, you know, we have to kind of like meet halfway at certain things with traffic stops and of course, that, you know, Especially they're part of the community as well, like for events and activities, like you know, if the like, town's having a some kind of like festival or you know, holiday occasion as well. And we're pretty much, I mean, they're all, always gonna be part of the community. I mean, people like us who are not always gonna be there, especially for you know, urgent scenarios. That is true. Like there is emergencies that can come up that you know, if you don't know something, it's important to reach out right to police officers. So that is a very good point. That is a very good point. Um, I feel like sometimes like what I've been hearing a lot is that there are things that like, let's say um, for me, I drive, I do drive. I passed when I was 17, I passed my road test on the first try and everything. But, um, I know there's been experiences from others who live with autism that I know that I'm like friends with myself personally who unfortunately got uh, accused of things by police officers because of something they didn't do while they were driving. So uh, like, for example, like if for like judging distances or something, like if some like with a car or something happened, right? So in that case, like what's important, what, sh what should police officers know like, what are some important things they should know to point out to uh, an individual about an individual with autism? Like, what is something you should point out? Yeah, just you know, be you know, more aware, you know, you know, like your surroundings, and uh, because I know it's like certain cues or some of the people on the spectrum, like with light sensitivity, noise sensitivity, you know, there are certain things you can and can't do, you know. Just, you know, be, you know, just have your 
aware surroundings. Right. That is, that is important to be like for a driver to be aware of their surroundings, no matter who they are and stuff. But um, another example I'm going to provide to you that I've been hearing a lot in this case is with lack of eye contact. Now, police officers, like if you're interacting with a police officer and they're showing lack of eye contact, have you ever heard of um, a case where a police officer would, uh, would accuse some of an individual of lying just because they're not looking at them? Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I haven't really experienced that, but, you know, I mean, yeah, because I know people on the autism spectrum, they do, uh, like, for me, you know, when I was young, of course, you know, the eye contact wasn't there. I mean, there's, a, of course, when kids, in, you know, especially doing the ABA therapy, or, you know, some of the, that's one of the things that's one of the key things to work on is eye contact. Because, <laughs> you know, you, pretty much, you have that for, you get older, like, doing stuff like, Zoom calls to like job interviews or especially teachers asking a question, you're in the classroom, you know, as well, or just making friends in general too. Right. Yeah. Eye contact, that's always been one of the hardest things. I know it was for me too. That is for sure. But yeah, that is something that, you know, that's one of the points that, um, this is why with this topic, what was interesting that you brought it up was earlier was because I was in a um, group meeting last week uh, called Autistics and Allies. It was created by, um, by a colleague of mine, friend and colleague of mine, who um, had decided to create this group. And he, our topic was about autism and law enforcement. So when you were saying about, about that, it was really cool that, that that's something that you do and you're actually like taking action in the community by talk, educating police officers. So I thought that's really cool. Mm -hmm. that's awesome, Justin. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. So besides, I know eye contact is something that a police officer should be aware about because I know for like what we've been saying that for individuals with autism, eye contact is such a hard a hard skill that takes time to to um, grow with. So, what what do you what are your other opinions of what um, police officers should understand when it comes to a passenger, or, or even like if, if an individual with autism is a passenger in the car or um, or as a driver? What are some other things that you want to share that that they should know? I mean, well, I think also because you know was an accident to get pulled over where, I mean, they're pretty much focused on getting their destination where like it's work or appointment and get pulled over. It pretty much is going to disrupt their day or because it's going to take some time to do the whole the, the traffic stop. You're absolutely right. Change that once that happens, the change of routine is just so thrown off. I, I, I get that. Like it's, it happens everywhere, and especially with that, you know, it that is important for police officers to understand that, like, get, uh, like, it kind of like an anxious feeling when that happens and stuff, and like, it's like, oh no, this is not happening, you know. That's I don't know, like, I don't know if you've personally experienced it, but I know, and I know I haven't really that much personal experiences, but I know others who have, and they feel like this anxious feeling, like, oh no, this is not good, like, and it's going to, like, ruin the rest of their day. Yeah. Right? For most people, it does, too, in general. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, don't want to get a ticket or anything, that's for sure. Exactly. Exactly. But, um, for me, like, I've been driving for, like, years now, and I've it never really happens for me. So I think that's another thing that police officers should know. I don't know if you ever told about this, that we actually can be really good, safe drivers. Do you drive? Yes, I do. You do? Awesome. Congrats to you about that. Yeah, I've been driving for pretty much 20 years. Wow. That's a long time. That's a long time. Very cool. Very cool. 
But um, yeah, so I think it's another point to for police officers to know that we can be safe drivers. Like we, because one of the things about it is that for people living with autism that we do follow rules pretty much. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, it gets, it's also kind of like goes part in like our routine a bit that we know we have to do this. Like it's important and knowing to follow those directions, right? So. Yeah. And each, of course, state has their own different laws when it comes to that kind of stuff as well. So like compared to where I am and where you are might be a little different. That is true. That is true. Like in my state, because I'm from New Jersey, and um, we have one of the rules, which it always confuses me because you never know what can happen. When you're turning, you're allowed to turn right on red unless, like, when it's safe to. I don't know if they allow you to do that in your state. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. You know, they could do the same here as well. Well, it's the same about like some, you know, some are more strict when it comes to speed limits at times too. Like, you know, some, like, you know, like you have to be at that limit or something you can be like, well, five over or, or that kind of stuff. Hmm. Right. Yes. I, um, I know with, I know here that with driving here that when it's cloudy or like gets rainy or snow, like you have to have the lights on when you, your car lights on. The fog lights too when it gets and at nighttime. I know at nighttime too you have to have your night lights on. Yeah. Well as well. Yeah. So how how long have you been um getting to speak for like to educate about autism to law enforcement? How many years have you been doing it? Right, that's a good question. It's, uh, I mean it's probably it feels like a few years, I think. I'm not one percent off the top of my head. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I've gotten to, like, I've been fortunate. I've gotten to uh, talk about, like, for me, it was more like talking about, like, living with autism for um, special ed education organizations and parent advisor groups throughout New Jersey. So that's what I've gotten to do. But it's really cool that you've done that. That's a good way to, to um, really be in, in the community, too. That's awesome, Justin. That's awesome. I'm going it's to help him like get back kind of thing too. Hmm? It's to help a way get back to the community. It is. It is. Exactly. And um I know with my job with my main job of being a paraprofessional, I give back as well. Um for all all the educators that helped me throughout my school years and now I'm working in the school today. So definitely a way of giving back, of course. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's awesome. I'm glad we got to talk about this, Justin. I agree. Cool. Very cool.